Welcome to Schooling Around. Today, Science Alive comes to Daniel Axford. Team Torque 2137 looks at their past, present, and future. And it's fifth grade exhibition time in our elementaries. Don't go away. Canine Stray Rescue is Oxford's own local dog rescue. Call them at 248-628-0435 or go to their website, dogsaver.org, and click on the Canine Stray Rescue League link. If you like big frogs and long snakes, you should have been at Daniel Axford a couple of weeks ago. Science Alive was there, and the kids were loving it. Our Kyle Snage was there, too. Take a look. What did you like about the Science Alive? Um, I liked... Um... The tongue in the um, scales. The tongue on the anteater? Yeah. What would you like about the tongue? Um, that it went really long. What was your favorite animal? Um, the, the snake. Why? Why do you like the snake? I would think you'd be scared of it. Because um, cause it had um, all those scales. And what was your favorite animal? Or <laughs> The ant eater. Why? Because it was really big. It was really big? Yeah. What else did you like? What was your least favorite? Or do you like it all? Or? I liked all of them. You want a pet? I have something to say. Would you have one of them as a pet? or? Yeah. I really wanted a pet because I don't have one. And we got rid of it because it pet biting in our chairs. Which pet do you want? A dog. What about today? What was your favorite animal? The, the ch chinchilla. You want? Do so you like Science Alive? Yeah. My favorite animal was the snake, and I want a snake for a pet. Your favorite animal? Yeah. It, it was the snake and the ant, baby ant eater because it was cool and I loved the snake because it had some cool like and I loved its tail and its face because it was so mesmerizing and about the ant eater it was like um the ant eater it was so cute and it, I loved it it was so cute that's all my favorite animal was the chinchilla and I want a chinchilla for a pet because it was really soft. Oh yeah, okay. And fluffy. And fluffy. And did you like the snake? Yeah. <laughs> I like the um, chinchilla because it was soft and I um, like how when it was soft it kind of um, can kind of flush into the mountain. Oh yeah. And what'd you think about the snake? I like the coat of the snake because it felt good when I touched it. Yeah. I like the snake because it was so cool and I thought it was going to be like really like slimy and stuff like that, but it wasn't. I liked how it was like smooth. <laughs> like smooth. And I liked um the like the fuzzy animal that was first cuz it was so warm and fuzzy. Yeah, yeah. Science Alive was headed up by Terry Neal. Oh, we are an education group that is designed to uh, go into schools, um, but we do a lot of other educational things. So we're biologists, um, teachers, and uh, we go to uh, do a lot of libraries, park and rec programs, but our major focus is getting into biology, into the young of the younger kids, and, and uh, some of our older. And what was your, what's well. your favorite part about doing the program? Uh, we are, well, what's a favorite part? It is working with the kids as well as with the animals, so it kind of gives us a, a nice little um, uh, taste of both where you've got the enjoyment of the kids having a fascination with the animals and getting them uh, prepared for other things in their life. And it's one of the fun things that uh, you can work with the kids and uh, and just the interactions that they have and that what they can work with uh, as their life progresses on to other things. Maybe they'll become the biologists that, you know, they could be the future for the, uh, for the animals too. Hmm. 
And is there is there a public center that uh, people can visit? We don't have it open to the public because we are open um, to go to school. So our main focus is going to you rather than, than you to us. So we found our niche to go directly in uh, to the schools. We can cover a lot more um, of the uh, public that way. Can so. you privately arrange for you to come out or is it only schools? Um, uh, yeah, we can do a lot of things from private birthday party parties to uh, schools to libraries. Uh, we do some different festivals and stuff. So, yeah, any of a, anybody can contact us. We can do a number of different things outside of public schools to private schools to, uh, um, like I said, we went down to a birthday parties and stuff too. Kids and critters, a great combination. Team Torque 2137 is next. They did it. They made it to the first robotics world's competition in Detroit. They made it to the quarterfinals, not quite like last year, but then these kids are making a comeback after losing about a dozen seniors who graduated last year. Ian Houston is their head mentor. Uh, I thought Worlds was great. You know, the, the kids were a little down that their robot didn't make it quite to the end there, but uh, they're really excited to win Engineering Inspiration Award this year. Um, I think it's our first time winning such an award at Worlds, and we're looking to go for chairmen's next year. Just tell me a little bit about that award. What is the significance of that particular award? So that award puts us as you know, one of six teams worldwide to be recognized for our efforts in terms of first in STEM outreach and community outreach as well. So helping those in our community and also helping students find STEM and inspiration in you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. We got some of the kids together and asked those who made their first trip to Worlds their thoughts. So much going on. There was like the venue was huge and like I was able to go last year, but I was on the team last year. And like after this year, like I, I was, we, were, we got to, and we invited um, our loft students, which are um, 18 to 26 year olds with special needs. And then our um, senior design class. And I, tour, I gave them a tour of um, what everything is going on and stuff. And at that point, I realized, oh my gosh, there's so much going on here that you can't just show it all one day. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, it was a lot of fun. It was very big. But at least for me, it never actually registered in my brain that it was the world competition. It just seemed like another state competition. So, so did was, you feel it was something lacking or? No, it was just very large and there was so much stuff that you didn't know was going on. It seemed a lot smaller. Uh -huh. Now, who was at Worlds last year? Okay, why don't you guys tell me what you thought last year compared with this year? Um, I really thought it was different, especially with it being uh, local in Detroit instead of down in St. Louis. Uh, especially the layout of the venue. Um, stuff was like a lot more accessible, whereas last year in St. Louis, like where if we wanted to go explore the pits or go see the Innovation Fair, we had to walk probably about a mile, a quarter mile in order to get there. But uh, in Detroit, they actually had some everything like right close next to each other. Um, in fact, the FTC event was right across from us where we were competing, and the uh, Junior FLL and FLL were just right below us, and it was all very close, so you could go and see other stuff at the event and not take up as much time as, say, when we were in uh, St. Louis, and it, would, it was just so time-consuming, you didn't have the chance to see it all. Okay, anybody else? Oh, come on. <laughs> so it was my fourth time at Worlds this year, and the past three years it's been in St. Louis. So St. Louis was always super crowded, and it, like as he said, it takes forever to get anywhere. But in Detroit, it seemed like there was a lot of more space, like there was more room to move around, but everything was way closer, so it took up, like, it was way easier to go to things and see things. Mm. It was like all in the same building instead of separated into like four different buildings. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? What about, uh, were you able to meet 
kids from other countries and stuff as easily in Detroit as you could I, in I talked to some different teams uh, from different countries, different um, ca states, um, and but they all like we were talking about how like the like, different how like how like, we run our team and like we're talking about from different like cultural views and then like because um, like I, I talked to a team from Canada and we spoke about how even though they're just across from the river the, like some of their team speaks French because they do speak French in Canada from there from and like just how different we run our teams even though they're the same thing we're just running it different. Ah, parlez-vous français? Mm. Me too. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, well, teams at these kind of competitions, they'll give out little button pins, and a friend of mine, uh, he, he's been in the uh, on the team a little longer than I have, and he collects them, has this massive jacket just covered him, so I go around the pits walking with him, you know, talking to other teams and collecting buttons, and... Um, another thing we do is we'll trade t-shirts and it was just so cool being able to go talk to teams that are like on the other side of the world in fact he was lucky enough to trade a t-shirt with a team from Japan so he actually has one of their team shirts and it, it was just really cool yeah. like all of this basically the entire representatives from the entire world all together over something that we all enjoy it was just amazing mm. What are your feelings about how things went this year overall? Who wants to start? Anybody? Um, last year, we were, as far as a competition standpoint, we were very successful. We made it all the way to the final field, which is called Einstein. And that's pretty much you've uh, won on your division. And at that point, you're pretty much one of the best robots in the world. And we made it that far this year. It was the furthest we've ever made at a world's competition before. And then this year, unfortunately, we were not picked for our division elimination rounds. But um, we were, we did win what's called the Engineering Inspiration Award, which is basically, uh, it kind of recognizes us for what we do uh, STEM related kind of as a team and as character building. And um, personally, I thought that was almost better this year than last year because last year I was a freshman and most of my class, we kind of saw that victory. We kind of expected it as something that was a given. We're torqued. We get this far. We're unstoppable. And now this year, I think students really got the chance to see that it's not that simple and we actually have to work. To, we worked really hard okay. to get to where we were last Let's get some other feelings on that. Come on, somebody wants to. This so, fun. Come on, say something. Um, this year, I think we did the best that we could with what we had and what we were able to do. Um, from last year, losing all the seniors that were in lead positions and having the underclassmen come up and take on those roles. Uh, with what we had and what we worked with, we made it far. But it's definitely something that next year we will definitely improve on. Yeah, how many seniors did you lose? Last year, well, like a dozen. Yeah, it was a hefty, hefty sum. Um, I'm really proud of Chairman, and um, I last year uh, we didn't. So last year we made it to uh, our second district event, but then from that point we didn't make it any farther. So Chairman's was done at that point, and uh, this year once like once we got we won at Waterford, and then with, for the Chairman's award. And it kept going and going and going until the state level. I was surprised myself because, like, I kind of had like this thought in my mind, like, we're not gonna get it, we're not gonna get it, we're not that good. Because I've I've heard the stuff that other teams do, we're not at that level. And when we got it, I was very surprised. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick one thing to improve on for next year, what do you think it would be? Uh. I believe that we definitely do improve how we go about building the robot. This year we wasted a lot of time and got behind schedule during our prototyping phase of when we build the robot and it cost us a lot of time and that could have been used to making the robot a lot better. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? 
I would say communication between like different parts of the team because I felt maybe some of the subgroups that were working on the robot, they maybe if they communicated a little better on where they were at, maybe the robot could have gotten done faster or they would have known what was going on. Like maybe have a meeting of the leaders in yeah. various groups or something like that. You really have to manage your time, don't you? Because you only have so much time to work with and try to use it the best you can. Anybody else? Oh, come on. I would say that I think we need to, um, the student leaders need to take a more motivated and engaged role. Because I think because we lost so many seniors and so many leaders on our team, those un underclassmen that came up into the leadership roles need to really like take it and run with it. In the meeting, somebody mentioned inclusiveness of the younger. What do you think about that? Anybody want to chime uh, in? I think they were. That's a very important thing because if we're not training the freshmen and everything from the start then I guess, as Caitlin said, what happened this year will continue to happen where our experienced seniors leave and then all the underclassmen are just left with no clue because they were so, the, the way they saw it, they follow the seniors and that's how it gets stuff done. But once the seniors are gone, then they're pretty much don't know what to do and we basically start from scratch again. Yeah. So what do you guys, I, um, so next year, uh, majority of our team, I was just talking about this um, with our item number who, and we were talking about how <clears throat> that majority of our team right now has majority of juniors and sophomores. And so I was talking about how um, if more people could step up and t like, they teach other students, then like, the so those sophomores can, once the juniors graduate next year, we can do it the same thing over and over and repeat it and repeat it mm -hmm. to make ourselves a better team. Okay, so the big competitions are done for this year. They were talking about a couple competitions during the summer. What's that all about? Does that mean anything? So there are several different events that happen postseason. And like last year we went to IRI, which was in Indianapolis, and it's just a competition just for fun basically, but it still shows your competitive competitiveness after the season ends. So they're talking about going to some event in Macomb, which we've never been to before. So that would just be um, like kind of a mock of a real competition just to continue playing the game and work on stuff. Do they use the same game as you had? Yep, this as the same game that we just played. And then um, RoboCon is an event in Lapeer where they um, bring a ton of community members and like little kids to come and we can teach little kids how to drive the robots and they can look at them. and. Then um, Kettering Kickoff is the same thing as uh, like IRI or the thing in Macomb that they're talking mm -hmm. about doing. It's just like a postseason event to play the game again, and it's just a way to um, get new experience for drivers, finalize the game, and like kind of leave everything that you have on the field. Yeah. Any of you guys involved with younger kids, not, you know, like middle school kids with robotics? Um, Do you take part in? So this week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and. So my mother helps out with that. And so our leader, um, Mr. Kimmel, had, and another teacher had come up to my mom, and they are talking about how um, how can we get more girls into STEM. And my mom had asked me, because like, I'm a very big believer of girls in STEM, and my mom was asking me, how can we get more girls to join more robotics teams? And if we can get a good amount of girls to join a robotics team at the middle school, we can create an all-girls team. Boy, wouldn't that be something? You think that's possible? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, will there be any more activities for 2137 this year? Maybe not robotics related? Are you going to do any community activities? Uh, like yeah, I think part of the Chairman's Award is what we do in our uh, off season when we're not competing. In fact, they mentioned one of our big events we do uh, is the Tough Mudder Optical Course Race. Um, they happen to be a pretty big sponsors of ours, so in return we um, we provide students as volunteers. And then usually, since robotics doesn't start up until the winter, uh, during the fall too, there are events we do, such as you mentioned being involved with little kids. We host a uh, first Lego League event here at uh, the high school, and that's for elementary age school. They build little Lego robots, so we host that event for them. And then there is also, um, there's, uh, 
race that go there's a dirt bike race that goes around Oxford uh, called the Dirt Road Derby. We also provide student volunteers for that. Okay, anybody else want to chime in? Um, we talked about tonight, um, so I think last year we started doing the um, Kingsbury uh, Festival, what's it called? Uh, um, so they're talking about us vol possibly volunteering there. Um, I'm hoping that we can do it because that'd be fun with the little kids because Kingsbury is like uh, K through eight. Mm -hmm. you, earlier you mentioned something about special needs kids mm -hmm. being involved. What? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, how does that work? How, how does? What is your connection like with that? Um, some of us, some of our students, um, are IEP students, and um, I believe that we should also get like the step more of the social needs crew. Like we have those two different special needs programs here at Oxford. There is the um, special pr the program that it's actually for high schoolers, and then we also have a program that is meant for older ch older like adults, ages 18 to 26. And so after they graduate high school, um, they have the choice if they want to have help. They'll come to our the loft program. And they'll get help. They work. Um, they teach them life skills, and they help them out. And so um, we off, we asked them if they would like to see a robotics competition. We invited them, and we gave them a tour of the of worlds. And um, I definitely think that that's a forever lasting impression on them. And those students, they very enjoyed it. Just remember, these kids won a chairman's award at the Waterford Regional, the Engineering Inspiration Award at Belleville, the chairman's award again at States and another Engineering Inspiration Award at Worlds. Some hardworking kids and parents there. Stay tuned. Another fifth grade exhibition has arrived at Oxford Elementary Schools. We stop by OES to check in with teacher Rita Flynn, who reminds us what this is all about. Tell me the importance of, of these projects and what these kids are doing. This is a big event in the IB curriculum, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually, I would say, the event. So we work really hard during the six weeks to have exhibition but really our students have been working hard since well now pre-k um, dk uh, up to fifth grade uh, the biggest takeaway i would say is for us to encourage others to make a difference so when we're working on our presentations and we're working on different action that our students are taking I just tell the students like you're making a big difference that you're sharing all of this valuable research that you gained but we're hoping that we plant seeds that we encourage others to take action and make change in the world so for example um, a student that may be you know researching we just had a student up here that was researching bullying you know after they hear the consequences of bullying, the victim, different perspectives of the bullying. We hope that when a student sees that presentation, they'll think to themselves, oh, you know, I want to make better choices in school. I want to make better choices in school because bullying is a real issue and affects many different kids. Um, and they, the students get perspective on that too. So, for instance, we had Pam Fine from the high school come in and talk to our students in regards to bullying. So she said, you know, you know, these are certain issues that our kids are dealing with and they're able to make that connection with them as well. So there was actually an app that was really detrimental in the kids' lives that was happening at the high school and the bully busters put a stop to it and she was able to share that story. So we're able to make these connections and share stories so they're inspired to make change too. So like the overall getting back to the question of like what's the big takeaway? 
to make positive change in these students' lives and to encourage adults as well to make shifts in their lives that could you know, make, make better choices as well. Here's what Zoe Maynard Smith and Cole Jacob chose. I do mental illness and health. Um, it's a little bit pieces about some types of mental illness. Um, I'm doing a little bit of depression, OCD, and um, like the eating disorders. What made you choose that? Um, I had a cousin that is about to be getting out in 2025. Uh, he's, I think, either 19 or 20 years old now. He's in prison, and my favorite band um, killed himself, which is Linkin Park. Um, and I just wanted to help others who have mental illness. I chose Cape Town's drought, so Cape Town, South Africa's drought known as Day Zero. What made you think of that? Because when I te our teacher was showcasing uh, an article about it, it really occurred to me that I could help because running out of water is a pretty big deal because that could wipe out hundreds of species that could live there. It could wipe out the entire city and a bunch of animals that are, have adapted to there. But then does climate change have something to do with that? Yes. So are there, are there organizations really working on that right now? Um, Down there? I'm pretty sure, yeah. There's a few organizations that are there that are trying to help stop it. And there are, uh, and every single, all the residents there are limited to the customated 50 liters, 13, also 13.2086 gallons. This is serious stuff. I asked Rita about that. Uh, the goodness. topics are getting, I would say, I guess the word would be they're just they're they're getting a little more intense and I think because they're well informed so the what they're being exposed to through like students CNN news it's what they've seen and what you know they've been hearing about these hot to to topics throughout the year and if something sticks with them they'll say to themselves like oh that's something I really want to dig deeper into uh, but yeah they are pretty serious but I think because their interest is so high it sticks with them. So I was in the middle school and we had a, a group of um, a girls that were doing poverty as their topic and they wanted to talk to the student council and how they could take action and making the food drive more successful. So within that they decided oh wow well you're doing this in fifth grade we could be doing this as well. And when I was in the classroom I just said hey can I have a show of hands of who has done exhibition and everyone raised their hand but one who just moved here. So now we're at this point where everyone in the middle school in eighth grade has done exhibition unless they, you know, just moved here. And I, I just put them on the spot and I said, can you tell me your topic and what you've learned? And they all spoke to it. And at the time I was able to videotape it and capture it on tape. So it was, it was just really powerful. And it made me excited to be able to think like, wow, you know, this is something that, that, that does stick with them. Um, I was able to share that video too. This is another way of like making connections. I was at an Oakland County um, instructional coach meeting, and during that meeting, I shared that information with them that they, that they also, that the, our eighth graders remembered it, and I recruited 20 people from Oakland County educators to come to our exhibition, which is kind of cool. I'm sure they were impressed too. They were very impressed. I think that's why they wanted to come. You hate to say it, it's as serious as some of these subjects are, but maybe fifth, they hear it all on the news all the time. Maybe fifth grade is a good play, time to start thinking about some of this stuff mm -hmm. and how to avoid it. Perhaps we'll have a few less of the heavier issues next year. Time for a break. That's schooling around for this week. Thanks to the multi-talented Kyle Snage at the controls, Dan's Weiss at the desk, and you for watching. This is Oxford Community Television, keeping it local.